Now that we've computed the differential equation that gives um, the dynamics of uh, the unemployment rate, we're going to solve that differential equation to figure out what the unemployment rate converges to. And um, so the critical point of the differential equation, where the unemployment rate converges to, that's actually going to be our beverage, that's going to be a beverage curve. That is, uh, it's going to be a negative relationship between um, unemployment and uh, vacancies or unemployment and tightness. Um, so we'll see that the model produces a beverage curve. We'll then study uh, the convergence towards the beverage curve and what we'll see is that the unemployment rate converges very quickly to the beverage curve and therefore we'll be able to greatly simplify the model by assuming that the unemployment rate is always on the beverage curve. So we'll abstract from the dynamics uh, away from the beverage curve. We'll just assume that we're always on it. And in fact, then we'll show that we can construct an aggregate supply curve from that beverage curve. Um, so in the model, the beverage curve and aggregate supply curve will be um, you know, isomorphic. Um, so, th so that's going to be uh, that's going to be a great simplification that we actually don't have to keep track of that differential equation for unemployment uh, that that you know suppresses like what one dimension in our dynamical system and um, that'll be you know that makes things easier to to compare with statics and also when we study welfare. Um, so let's look at this differential equation for the unemployment rate and let's solve it. Um, so we saw we said that. Uh, the law of motion of the unemployment rate is as follows. So the law of motion of the unemployment rate, which we denoted by u. Uh, so we said that it was um, u dot of t, so the time uh, derivative of u is equal to uh, so we said it was lambda plus f, uh, sorry, minus lambda plus f u of t uh, plus lambda, uh, where uh, lambda here, that's the job separation rate. So the rate at which um, the relationship between worker and households uh, break down, and then F here was a job finding rate. So the rate at which unemployed uh, workers uh, find a job, right? That's what we had we had found. Um, so first question is, what is the critical point of this differential equation? <clears throat> So the critical point of the differential equation, you know, we we can call it, we are, uh, we are going to call it u um, bar, let's say, uh, and this u bar, this critical point, is such that uh, u dot is equal to zero. Uh, so that's, our, that's the definition of a critical point. If the value of u, where um, u doesn't change over time. So, yeah, in this, you know, if if we use a, a terminology from economics, it'll be the steady state of uh, a dynamical uh, system. Uh, but in differential equations, that's what we call the critical point of our differential equation. So it's the value of the variable where the time derivative of the variable is zero, so where the, the variable stops uh, moving. Um, so uh, to have um, u dot equal to zero, so basically we need minus lambda plus f u bar plus lambda equal to zero. So u dot equal zero implies this, and that implies u bar is equal to lambda over lambda plus f. So this is the critical point of our differential equation. And um, of course, uh, f, so job finding rate is a function of uh, theta. So the critical point, in fact, you can rewrite it as uh, u of theta is equal to lambda divided by lambda plus f of theta. 
Mm. That's a critical point. And then here you can see that this um, critical point is actually a decreasing function of tightness. Um, because um, the joint training rate f is an increasing function of tightness, and so in fact this this relationship between unemployment and tightness that shows up here that's a beverage curve. That's a beverage curve because uh, it's a negative relationship between unemployment and tightness, uh, but it also means that it's going to be a negative relationship between unemployment and uh, vacancies. So this is the beverage curve. How can we see that it's a negative relationship between unemployment and vacancies? Well, we can rewrite this as follows. Uh, so this relationship, you can rewrite it as lambda plus f of theta is equal to lambda over u. Uh, <clears throat> so you can rewrite this as f of theta is equal to lambda minus lambda u over u. So here I've just subtracted lambda on both sides. Uh, and then here I want to, uh, so f of theta, because we've used the Cobb Douglas uh, function, so we know that it's um, u theta 1 minus eta is equal to lambda minus lambda u over u. Um, and here what I want is to make uh, the vacancy rate appear so that we can have both vacancies and unemployment, and then we can see how they are related. Um, so this gives us that theta is equal to uh, lambda minus lambda u divided by mu times u, and then all of this to the power of 1 over 1 minus eta. So this is still good. Um, but then theta, we know that it's, uh, it's u, it's v over u, so that uh, gives us that v is equal to um, lambda minus lambda u divided by, oh, let me go to a different page. We're almost there. Uh, so this gives us that um, v is equal to lambda minus lambda u, mu, u. And so this is v over u, right? Because theta is v over u. So I multiplied both sides by u. Um, and so here I can put u 1 minus eta, so that when I put it to the power of 1 over 1 minus eta, I just get u. And so this simplifies nicely. So we get that v is lambda minus lambda u divided by mu u uh, to the power of um, eta. 1 over 1 minus um, eta. OK, and so here we, have, here we have actually a proper beverage curve. In the sense that this is a relationship between um, vacancy and unemployment. But you can see that. Uh, here we have a beverage curve that we can write as a v of u with a dv du strictly negative. You can see that because um, the u in the you have lambda minus lambda u so that's decreasing in u. You divide that by mu times u eta, which is increasing in u. So that's something that's both due to the numerator denominator it's decreasing in u, and then you put that the power of one over one minus eta, which is positive number, so all of this is going to be decreasing. Uh, it's going to, to be decreasing, actually, in you. So here we have a negative relationship between vacancies and unemployment. That's a beverage curve. Um, so the critical point of our differential equation uh, gives us a beverage curve here. Okay, so now the question is how quickly are we going to converge to the beverage curve? Alors, convergence of, so u of t is the unemployment as a function of time to 
let's call to u of theta, uh, which is a critical point of our differential equation. Well, so let's rewrite. Uh, so let's rewrite the differential equation. It's oops, sorry. It's u dot of t minus lambda plus f u of t is equal to lambda. Let's go back. That's what the differential equation gives us. Yes. Oh, that's a plus here. Okay. That's the differential equation. Now we know to solve, uh, this is just a simple um, first order linear differential equation. So we know to solve it. We know that the solution is ut minus, so u of theta, the critical point, is equal to u of zero minus u of theta. That's the initial condition to the power of, uh, so multiplied by the exponential to the power of minus lambda plus f t. Uh, so we know that that's the solution because this is a very standard differential equation. Uh, and, you know, it's very easy, uh, it's very easy to check uh, that's that's the solution. So first of all, uh, we we have to verify that this thing actually uh, satisfies our differential equation. So if I take, so if I have uh, ut that's given by this, I know that ut is equal to um, u of theta plus u zero minus u of theta e minus lambda plus f t. So u dot of t, that's, I'll have the u of theta that's going to disappear. I'll have minus lambda plus f times, um, of course, u of zero minus u of theta uh, exponential uh, of minus lambda plus f uh, t. So that's basically minus lambda plus f, let me write it, u zero minus u of theta e minus lambda plus f uh, t. Uh, that's just, just taking the derivative of our exponential, but that's just minus lambda plus f times uh, ut minus u of theta. u dot of t. So this I can rewrite it as u dot of t plus lambda plus f ut is equal to lambda plus f u of theta. But given that u of theta is given uh, up there, we can see u of theta is lambda divided by lambda plus f. So lambda plus f times u of theta is just equal to lambda. Uh, and so here we can see that the differential equation is indeed is satisfied. Um, furthermore, so we know that when you have differential equations like this, you have a whole uh, range of families, uh, of families of functions that satisfy it, uh, all up, uh, no, up to a constant. But here we can see that, uh, so this is our solution. You can also, so we have to verify that at a given time, the two things are actually equal, but uh, you can uh, verify it that at time zero, this you have u zero minus u, u of theta is equal to u zero minus u theta because time zero, the exponential is going to be equal to one. So in addition, you can verify that indeed, uh, this is going to uh, satisfy the initial condition. So plus this thing satisfy initial condition at t is equal to zero. So at t equal to zero, my uh, ut at t equal to zero, it will indeed be equal to u of zero. So this works out perfectly. So this is our solution. So 
What does this solution say? Well, it basically says that the gap between uh, so the interpretation of the solution is that that the gap oops, the gap between ut and the beverage curve shrinks at a rate uh, lambda plus f. Okay, that's what we can see because you can see that ut minus u of theta uh, so this thing is just the gap. U of zero minus U of theta, that's the initial gap between the unemployment rate and the beverage curve. And here, this is the exponent of minus lambda plus FT. That's just how quickly that gap, that initial gap is going to shrink. And you see that the rate at which it shrinks is lambda plus F. Uh, okay, so the speed at which um, you're going to converge towards the beverage curve is given by lambda plus f. So lambda plus f is the speed at which Unemployment um, converges to the beverage curve. Um, and um, so the question is, you know, how big is lambda plus f? But what what we know is that uh, in the US. Um, roughly, lambda is uh, about 3% um, per month, a little bit more. F is something like uh, 59, I think on average, is 59% per month. So what we get that lambda plus F, it's about 62% uh, Per month. Uh, and so that means that uh, the gap between the unemployment rate and the beverage curve is going to shrink um, very, very quickly. So here we, we have a you know, the unemployment rate is going to converge the beverage curve and it, the dynamics are one of uh, exponential decay. So the gap between um, the initial unemployment rate and the beverage curve decay exponentially. And so we know that uh, the half-life of, of that exponential decay is given by the following expression. So the half-life is the time that it takes for um, the initial distance between the unemployment rate and the beverage curve to be divided by two. Uh, so it's the time it takes for the unemployment rate um, to cover half the distance to the beverage curve. So if you know the unemployment rate is not exactly on the beverage curve, it's somewhere further out because you had a shock, then the time it takes to cover half of that distance, that's the half-life. Now the half-life uh, is given by log of two divided by lambda plus f. That's true for you know any um, exponential decay uh, phenomenon uh, where lambda plus f is the rate at which the exponential decay occurs. And so this is going, uh, log of two is roughly 0 0.69, lambda plus f here is 0 0.62. And so this is about 1.2. And so because the uh, rate of decay is in months, this is 1.2 months. So this means that it's going to take 1.2 months, you know, wherever the unemployment rate is, in 1.2 months, half of the distance 
uh, with a beverage curve is going to be uh, will have disappeared. Okay, so it's a very fast uh, convergence towards the beverage curve. Um, and so in a quarter, uh, so you know, a quarter is three months. So in a quarter, you will have. Uh, so if we take that the half life is about you know 1.2 months, about one month. In a quarter, you will have one half to the power of three because a quarter is three months. Uh, so that's how much one half to the power of three. So that's one eight uh, of the initial distance will be left. So, you know, one eight, we can say it's about, uh, you know, just a bit more than 10% of the initial distance with beverage curve is left. Uh, okay, so it means that when you have a shock, you move away from the beverage curve. After uh, a quarter, you have only 10% of that initial distance that left. So that's, you know, that's going to be very small. Um, and so as a result, the, the key takeaway from all of this analysis is that uh, the convergence um, to the beverage curve is very fast. And we can see the reason why is because um, the flows between um, unemployment and employment are large. Uh, so because lambda and F are large, and in particular, the one that's especially large here is F, the so job finding rate, you know, it's almost 60% per month. Um, so it means that you have a probability of finding a job in a month of about 60%. So that's a lot. And thanks to this very large uh, rate, you're going to have very fast convergence to the beverage curve. Um, so in any lab, you know, in any market in which you have large job separation rate, job finding rate, you can have a fast convergence to the beverage curve. Um, and, and so what we're going to assume is that we're going to assume to simplify and get rid of the dynamics of unemployment and reduce the size of our dynamical system. We're going to assume that un the unemployment rate is always on the beverage curve. So what we're going to assume is that uh, the unemployment rate is just a function of the market tightness. U is a function U of theta of the tightness, which is equal to lambda over uh, lambda plus F of theta. And so now we don't need to keep track of the differential equation for unemployment. We just assume that the unemployment rate is a function of tightness. Um, so this type of assumption is very similar to the assumption we make that um, households are able to um, take the actual, the true market tightness as given when they do their calculation. You know, we discussed that in reality, probably people don't anticipate exactly what the market tightness is. Maybe they think that the the past tightness is what's going to happen this period, but then we see that over time, if people update their belief by using past tightness in their calculation, then the system is going to converge to a point where, uh, you know, the, the tightness remains, uh, you know, is always the same. And so people, you know, the past tightness is the same as the present tightness. And so people are able to correctly anticipate the market tightness and therefore they are able to make decision with a proper belief. But we saw that the system, uh, even if people have kind of naive belief where they use past tightness as the tightness they believe would occur, the system is going to converge to a point where uh, people are able to anticipate the correct tightness. And we said, well, so that we don't have to take the dynamics of the belief into account, we're just going to always assume that people have correct belief. So in a sense, you know, you simplify by assuming that you get directly to the point where the system will converge. Here, it's exactly the same we do. We simplify the analysis by assuming that the unemployment rate directly gets to the point where the unemployment rate would have converged if we took the full dynamics into account. And so this is only a good assumption if the convergence is fast. So 
for people, you know, we can assume that they learn quickly uh, what the market does, or even better, we'll assume that the government, uh, the statistical agency in the government will tell them what um, the, where the market is, so people are able to learn quickly. Here, we've showed that given the size of the flows on the labor market, um, convergence should be which curves very fast, so we can assume that, in fact, we're always at that point where an opponent would converge if it followed the dynamics. And that allows us to replace a differential equation by just a static relationship, which will bring a lot of tractability. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's what we're going to do here.